But yeah, about the political process, as everyone does know, we are in the middle, or actually we're at the beginning of a presidential election campaign cycle with Iowa, which was a lot more interesting than what I thought it would be. And we'll start with the Republican side, since it, that was a little bit more straightforward. And with the Iowa caucuses that were just uh, a few days ago, it's Iowa for the Republican side is really not an indicator of who is getting that nomination um, over the last few cycles. Uh, I mean, just when you look at Mike Huckabee, Santorum, and Ted Cruz won it this time, does it mean anything? Um, actually, it mean, more than likely it looks like it's a bad sign for Ted Cruz uh, because it's still New Hampshire. Trump is still polling very well. It looks like he's going to win New Hampshire. Um, so, I mean, it, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, there was He's being accused of some shenanigans <laughs> with the Ben Carson situation, but Carson kind of, his campaign set himself up for that. Why would you fly back to Florida during a caucus and then give an excuse that you are looking for a change of clothes? Clearly, obviously, to the vast majority of people, that's they know that's not why he was flying back to Florida. Why it was, why, what was the real reason? We'll probably never know. But that really doesn't matter. It's how it looked. And Ted Cruz used that to his advantage to <laughs> to tell Carson supporters, that, oh, you're wasting your vote. Carson's dropping out because he's not, he's going to be in Florida and mention that he's not going to go to New Hampshire. He might as well vote for me. Did that help him win? Uh, it might have got him some votes. I mean, probably did. People believe stuff like that for reasons I still don't know. Um, I would do my own research on that kind of stuff. And But the real interesting piece of information there is that Donald Trump decided to skip the Fox News debate because he did not want to receive tough questions from Megyn Kelly, and he again went on Twitter rampage against her, calling her bimbo and tramp and all of these things he will not say to her face after just, what was it, 2008, he said that she was great at her job, moderating and all that kind of stuff, and now because she dare ask him questions, actually, you know, all she really did was read his own tweets back to him, and evidently Donald Trump is a bully who really can't even be presented with his own words without throwing a temper tantrum of a that resembles a six year old it's I don't quite understand that approach at all I don't understand that I mean you want to be president and you claim that you're going to stand up to Putin you claim that you're going to stand up to China but you can't answer questions from Megyn Kelly and, and let's not go overboard. Does she ask the best questions for a conservative, a pundit? Yes, she does. But we're not in the day and age of a Candy Crowley or anyone like that who's going to ask follow-up questions and basically fact-check you as the debate is going. We That doesn't happen. I, I, I don't even expect it to happen. I, I understand that they're going to ask a question, it might be tough, but lie or not, there's not going to be a live fact check on them or a follow up to that question. It's unfortunate, but it's just not going to happen. Too many, it seems like too many uh, listeners don't feel it's a journalist's job in that situation to what they call debate a candidate. I don't really think it's debating a candidate, if you know they're lying, and you call them out on it. That's what journalists are supposed to do. So when I when I see tweets like this, like, oh, why, why is so-and-so deciding to argue with so-and-so on stage? It's their job. If they're lying, they're supposed to call them out. That's why the, what I believe was the Fox Business debate, those, those pundits were ridiculed because they dare 
challenge a politician. How dare you? Never question a politician because it's not like they make policies that affect your life or anything. It, it's really alarming how misinformed a lot of us are when it comes to the political process. It, it bothers me to see, honestly. Uh, but I really do think that uh, Trump deciding to, to skip that debate cost him Iowa and might have, if he won Iowa and New Hampshire back-to-back, -back, race might have been over on the Republican side, but it, it allowed Rubio to raise the rise in the polls. It allowed Cruz to give a victory speech that was odd, but it's Ted Cruz. Um, so, and it's already narrowed the field down a little bit with candidates that never really had a chance dropping out. Uh, the only candidate I was really disappointed to see because with was Rand Paul dropping out because he and John Kasich are the only <clears throat> only one only only two on the Republican side that I that would give human humanist answers uh, during debates. Like they honestly gave answers that were human, and for some reason that's just not playing well on the Republicans on the Republican field at all. Excuse me. It's sad to see that. I don't like that. But it is what it is. That's state of Republican Party right now. Um, but moving over to the Democrat side, that was that, that a race that come, it came within, depending on what your which count you're looking at, point two or point three percent, or yeah, point yeah, point two or point three percent of the vote. Yeah, it's. And I still saw, I was kind of shocked that Nate Silver went as far as to say that Bernie needed to win. After, even after that, even after a recount, he, he might actually win, but with the delegate count being that close, it doesn't matter. The, the mere fact, which polls are now representing, that he showed that he can compete with Hillary Clinton, period, made him a winner, because now he's within four points, or a Actually, I believe that's two points nationally with Hillary. That says something. The, the Iowa meant something, and it meant something for Bernie Sanders. It meant a lot for Bernie Sanders. And I think that momentum is going to help him going forward. He's definitely going to win New Hampshire. I don't, there's no doubt about that. South Carolina is the 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 big prize right now. If he can win back to back, that's a big thing. It's a huge thing for him. Because just what, three, four weeks ago, he was down eight, nine points in Iowa. He may have actually comes out to win Iowa if they actually do look into and reopen a that like with all that mess that's going on there. Um he might have actually won. We don't know. If Martin O'Malley wasn't still in the race, he may have won. Again, it's all conjecture. We, we have no idea. But the fact is, Bernie Sanders is a viable candidate, and the exact result of Iowa was definitely in his favor. And we saw that at the town hall, and then we saw that at the debate where Hillary came out I mean, she came out swinging for Sanders. Like, oh, <laughs> like it, I expected that. Um, I even said that to um, uh, Around the Nation host from FYination.com, uh, Jeff Walder. If I was like, Hillary's going to come out swinging. Like, she has to at this point. She has to. She, ha she has to go after Sanders. The way she's been going after Sanders, it doesn't... I mean, it, it doesn't seem like it's going to help her at all. Especially, I mean, I just don't like, the way she's attacking him is not going to convince any of the young vote to come over to her side. Her almost saying, yeah, I took my money from Wall Street. So, yeah, that's not that's not going to work for you, Hillary. Like, I, I'm, I don't know if her campaign is not aware of that. Or they're just throwing in the towel on the young vote and hoping they can bring out all the older 
Democrats and those who are passionate, very passionate about having a female president, which is not a bad thing. I feel if a woman is qualified, she should be president if, if she's elected. Like, there's no reason why we can't have a female president. But I did feel that Hillary, she, uh, she kind of went to a place where you could call what she said sexist of expectations because she decided to refute Bernie Sanders saying that she's an establishment politician by invoking sex. I'm paraphrasing, but she basically said that how can you say that I'm an establishment politician and I'm a female running for president? That that does not that that to me is almost sexist. Like, oh, I there I am female, therefore I cannot be an establishment politician. That's false. I mean, that's just false. Any politician can be an establishment politician. Your gender or sexual orientation, none of that stuff matters. Your sex doesn't matter. Your gender doesn't matter. It, it does, none of that matters. Well, sexual orientation doesn't matter either. I, I messed up a little bit there, but <laughs> none of that matters. So, because we can look at her donations and where it's, that money is coming from, her speaking fees, and how much she took in there, I don't know how it gets more establishment than that. The fact you're a woman doesn't 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 matter. So I I, I was bothered by that response because it it just seems it's just a stereotypical politician move to go there, and she she showed in the 2008 um, primaries against President Obama that she will go as low as she needs to if she feels it's going to help her win. Bernie Sanders is refusing to really go out and out and attack her, which I honestly think is helping him, which is enduring him even more to voters, because the Trump effect, the Trump, Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders have basically one thing in common after the fact they're human males and all the obvious things. They are bringing out people that are angry, upset, want to see a change. They don't. They want a politician that doesn't have to answer to a donor. And they want someone who is authentic. I think those on the right, or especially the conservatives that are supporting Donald Trump, are probably mistaken about the authenticity there. Because I don't think he means... Honestly, I don't think he actually means half of what he says. Does it matter? Not really, because he's saying it, and it could have a long-term negative effect on the body politic with them saying these types of things, these type of just racist things and ridiculous things, openly sexist things, that though, if he means it or not, it's causing damage. Well, on the other side, I believe a lot of young people, millennials like myself, are drawn into Bernie Sanders. Even I've even heard some conservatives, like in my personal life, say. Hey, uh, yeah, I, I like Trump, but the Sanders guy is really cool too. I was like, I, I want to do a study how you get from that to that. How <laughs> the only thing I can really point to is the the authenticity and not wanting to be bought and sold by politicians, or not by politicians, but by corporations and big donors. That's the only thing I can see there. So that's that's why I think Sanders staying. A respectful towards Secretary Clinton is what's best for him. It's helping. It's got him this far. Why would he change that? He doesn't need to go overly negative. He can refute her on policy like he did during the debate. But he doesn't. But he doesn't need to go overly negative because why would he? Because that would look like he's sinking to Hillary's level, and Hillary is coming off pretty desperate because just a couple of weeks ago she wasn't even mentioning him by name. And now she's throwing out everything from Chelsea to every kind of negative attack you can put on him about aggressive, moderate. Hillary's a progressive now because she knows that it's polling well and it sounds good. And there's just a lot to go into there. Um, but to finish up this segment, there is 
a Republican debate tonight, which will be pretty interesting. Um, they're not going to get substantive, of course not, because uh, that's I've not really watched a substantive Republican debate yet. The last one was probably the most substantive, where Trump wasn't present, but he's present now. So you can expect more of the same from him, I believe. He's going to go after Cruz. He's going to try to try to look like the toughest guy on stage and poke his chest out and point to the polls that he's leading. Ironically enough, he said he was crushing Sanders in the polls and um, that he would beat Sanders in the general election. I was like, you really have not looked at any of those polls you love, Mr. Trump. You haven't looked at them at all. You are getting demolished by Senator Sanders in every single poll. If the general election comes down to Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump will be lucky to win 12 states. 